Well, welcome back to Nightly Nonsense. Poor Pastor Mills, heard me say that now four times. <laughs> uh, we make some sense out of the nonsense, right? Uh, we've been talking about this election thing. We've been talking about last last night, really, uh, is President Trump going to make you a better Christian, right? And there's a whole bunch of people that seem to think, like, that's the deal, right? That is the deal. Uh, tonight, I want to I want to finish up by just asking... Uh, a few more questions, right, about this whole Christianity and uh, and election thing, right? So, uh, Pastor Mo, when we when we think about all of the hype that there was before the election, right? We got to get Trump in. We got to get Trump in. We got to get Trump in, right? Uh, some of that was because we were afraid of our rights being taken away. We were, we were afraid of. Uh, the very thing that the other side is being afraid of right now. Mm -hmm. Their rights are going to be mm -hmm. taken uh, away from them, right? So just maybe paint me a little bit of a picture. If if Vice President Harris had gotten elected, right, realistically in the next four years, what would we have been looking at as a church? I think we'd been looking more at the primacy of prayer, I think this may have would have driven people to their knees. Mm -hmm. uh, I I sense that there would be, we need awakening in America. Mm -hmm. We need revival. Mm -hmm. Because I think there are those who would say, Trump being elected is going to put us in a position of revival mm -hmm. when maybe we should say, not so fast, not so fast, my friend. So. Just based on what you just said, please tell me why, as Christians, we weren't praying for Vice President Harris to get elected. <laughs> well, for one thing, I think if people looked at Scripture, mm -hmm. see what it has to say, then consider the two candidates, which one would have been more aligned with Scripture. Not saying which one is a Christian or not, but yep. which one would govern according to biblical principles the uh, conclusion would be Trump would. Mm -hmm. Even though he may not have the personality. Even though he may not have the character. So electing President Trump, we've already established this, gives us the opportunity to be more Christ-like. I don't think there's anybody that would argue, right? He's going to give a, we're going to have opener churches and opening avenues for prayer. And he's going to support some of the things that, mm -hmm. that we support, right? And I want to ask you about that in a second. We close it out. I'm going to say the most controversial thing for, for the end, right? But sometimes getting what we want mm -hmm. is, is not what we need. Yes. Right? So as we, as we look at this, right, I, I think back to, because we talked about David and, you know, and, and the kingship of Israel, the Israelites demanded a king. And, and God mm. tried to say to them, you aren't going to want this. <laughs> right? Here's what's going to happen. You don't want this. right? You need me, not this. Yes. And the people, no, 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 no. We want a king. We want to be like everybody else. right? There are several examples in the Old Testament of when God said, I'm going to give you over to what you want. And then what you want is going to destroy you. Right? I'm going to give you over to those items. Mm. I'm going to give you over to all those things. We've talked down here, and you and I have talked a little bit, but in, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, right, it, there is some good things, but then there's a list of here's what's going to happen if you disobey God. Mm -hmm. One of those things in verse 28 is this mental confusion, is this, this mental distortion in the blindness, right? And we see it, and we're always like, well, why is that? Well, it, it's, it's actually God said it's going to happen. Right? So we are looking at a culture today that is mentally confused and blinded. People are saying, and, and the Bible tells us this is going to happen. There's going to come a time where people say what is wrong is right, and what is right mm -hmm. is wrong. Yep. So does the election of President Trump help in removing some of that spiritual confusion that is going on in our country today? Not necessarily. I mean, in some ways, I think it does uh, regarding welfare, decency, and saying the word decency. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, President Trump's an indecent man. <laughs> yeah, he's had a seedy past. 
but uh, just to govern as a president according to what is written in the Constitution, yeah. you could say he could do a very good job with that. Now, th there are people who, again, are, are confusing this whole thing. They want our country uh, to be ran by the Bible and not the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, we could argue that that's, yeah, yeah, we would like that. Mm -hmm. But just like with the Constitution, that creates this atmosphere of interpretation. Yep. Right? We wouldn't have all these denominations if it weren't for interpretation, right? So even if President Trump was running this country based on the Bible, it would be his interpretation of the Bible, mm -hmm. which is going to cause some problem with a whole bunch of us, mm -hmm. right? So again, this brings me to the, the question of, of abortion. There are those out there that are going to tell me that President Trump is a pro-life candidate, mm -hmm. right? And I will argue with them vehemently, he's not, right? He's not pro-life because when you are asked, right, will you sign a national mm -hmm. abortion ban and you say, no, I'll veto it, you're not pro-life, mm -hmm. right? President Trump found a convenient way to handle this. I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. He sent it back to the states. Yep. And for them to solve it democratically. So we got a <laughs> bunch of states that are, not, as Christians, we're looking at a bunch of states that are have that have in their hands this whole abortion issue. Yeah. Right? But as a Christian, the states shouldn't have the abortion issue. Neither should people have the abortion issue. The abortion issue is settled by God. Mm -hmm. Is it not? Yeah. Right? So in, in God's eyes... The abortion issue is a pretty shut yep. event. O open shut case, yep. But yet Donald Trump allowed it to go to the states where now it has become wide open. Yeah. Right? So in your mind, does that make Donald Trump a pro-life person? Mm. That is a really good question. I know. I only ask these really good questions. That's, you're just right. Uh, if you say I will not sign a national abortion ban, are you a pro-life president? <laughs> that is a really good question. I'm mulling this thing over. Because on the one hand, I would say... Legislatively, the proper way to do it would be through a, an amendment process. Pass it through Congress, get it so that it goes out to each state and put it in the Constitution as an amendment, human life amendment. But I can see the argument for no federal legislation can institute an abortion ban that has to go through an amendment process. <sighs> so now we have a problem because God has said pro-life means anti-abortion. Mm -hmm. Our Constitution has a process. We don't mm -hmm. get to just say we're anti-abortion. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we have a problem. Do we want a president who goes by the Constitution first or by who goes by God first? That is a real good question. Technically, he can go by way of the state's route, mm -hmm. the state route, mm -hmm. um, and say, yeah, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I feel like my power is restricted due to the Constitution to prevent me and Congress from enacting legislation, not an amendment, but mere legislation. So if the House and the Senate presented President Trump with an anti-abortion law that he could sign and make a national anti-abortion law, and he said exactly what you just said, sorry, the Constitution says I can't do that, so I'm going to veto this. Mm -hmm. And he gets in front of God. Mm -hmm. What do you think God is going to say to Donald Trump? I put you in the presidential position so that you could 
defer to what the people wanted over what I wanted. Mm. I know. Uh, no person shall be deprived of life. No. That's Amendment 5, by the way. And that's where you can build a constitutional case for it. But the issue of life? what would God say to him if he were presented with this legislation? So I just read in Jeremiah chapter 1, love, love, love the chapter. But Jeremiah is where God says to him, I, I knew you. I created you in the womb for this purpose, mm -hmm. right? So that means we have purpose before we come right, out, right? So we know where God stands on this whole thing. Yeah, I'm sure he he wouldn't have wanted Jeremiah to be aborted when he created right. him with a purpose and a, and a plan, right? So again, this is a hard question, and the reason I'm pressing you on it is because I think everybody should answer this, because again, this is where we are combining things together, right? You will never convince me currently that President Trump is a pro-life president. You will convince me that he's a pro-legislation to get him out of trouble and out of tight spots, president, <laughs> right? Because that's exactly what he did. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, so right. I, I'm, I'm going to get that. I've just left it up to the states. Yeah. Right? No, let me move past that for a second, and, and you can do a Sophie Scholl on it and explain to the, everybody where you stand and all those things, right? Rather than me making you sit here and squirm anymore. That's Mel in the middle. That's what we do, right? But we had this presidential election. We're seemingly God, right? People are going to say God put into place his, his servant, Donald Trump, who is going to bring a spiritual reprieve to our country. In that same night, you and I were just talking about this, that same exact night, Pastor Mel, nine out of 10 states voted yeah. to protect their abortion law. Yeah. Th these are red, red states right. that did this. So is it possible that while we're all celebrating Reprieveness Day, the God of this universe is looking down and saying, Judgment Day. Because now with those with those yeah. ten states voting, yeah. you have very few states who have not made their decision. Right. Who have not who have not done this. Right. So as a nation, right, our country has has spoken pretty clearly. Even even like the places where we didn't think it would happen, they have spoken pretty clearly on protecting abortion rights. Is it possible that we have, just like we had people who were saying God chose Harris, God chose Trump, is it possible that we have a real problem that people who are saying, no, no, but I don't think that this election, right, is bringing anything but judgment from God, would those people have a case? I think they do. I'm sorry, I do. Yep. Because to uh, volitionally, as a people, and act something like that, it invites wrath, bl innocent bloodletting, um, to that extent where you embed it in a state constitution yeah. or in law, there's peril. And I don't think we've thought through that enough. Okay, so let me give you the last little thought process that goes back to what you said, because I'm going I'm to be stuck on it now for a while. Is it possible that there are churches that are going to celebrate this Sunday with no real clue that God may have abandoned our nation? Right. Yeah. I, I do believe that. Would that create within people a sense of sullenness? Yes. I should be celebrating, but for some reason... I'm not celebrating. Yeah. We got what we wanted, but I don't I don't feel any excitement about this because the Holy Spirit within us is saying, Yeah, we're in deep trouble. Yeah. So is it possible that the church could be looking at a really, 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 really hard next four years? And that we're going into that totally unprepared because we think that by the electing of Donald Trump that we're gonna get a reprieve and God said, You've got nothing but judgment, and I'm going to use Donald Trump 
as the tool for that. Would it be possible for Donald Trump to be God's chosen instrument to judge the church? I think that possibility needs to be thoroughly reflected upon and considered. Well, that sounds like a perfect way to end uh, this little montage of nightly nonsenses. We've tried to give you some things to chew on, some things to think about, some things to, to consider, right? Is it possible that God would use Donald Trump to bring judgment upon his church first? Maybe the rest of it, the non-church people, all get a reprieve. Maybe they all get, but God uses judgment right through Donald Trump. Think about that. I'm pretty, yeah. pretty sure that some of you might have a reaction to that. We'll look forward to that. Now, to be good, be good dinner table conversation. Why don't you throw that out for a bunch of people? Thanksgiving or dinner. Go to your church and do it. <laughs> we'll see you next time right here on Nightly Nonsense.